G'day, Hugh here from videsign.com.au, a design company based on the Gold Coast in Australia. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to have a look at how you can use Luminar to uh, edit landscape photography. And you can take a basic landscape photo and make it look really good using Luminar with some basic steps. We're going to use a JPEG photo in this case, not a RAW photo, to show you how you can actually you still work on JPEG photos, even if you haven't shot in RAW. So let's help on Luminar and see how it's done. So here we have a uh, landscape photo along exposure taken on a cloudy day. It's actually a JPEG file, not raw, as you can see there, .jpg. But we can do uh, quite a bit with it using Luminar and really improve the way this uh, landscape photo is going to look. So to begin with, we'll just start with um, the uh, normal starting procedure which is the develop, so it's not called develop raw because it's JPEG so it has uh, the same adjustment abilities uh, uh, but it's just uh, working on the JPEG file so as normal we would uh, bring down the highlights and open up the shadows add a bit of white a little bit of black a bit more white in this case uh, and boost up the clarity and uh, just increase the exposure in this because it's a little underexposed and uh, add back a little bit of contrast so that's our beginning step which we always do to begin our photo editing with our develop adjustments now I like to work on individual adjustment layers rather than uh, clogging up one uh, one layer at a time so we'll add some more filters to this so we'll uh, come up to the uh, ever trusty AI filter and just give that a little bit of a boost to around 25% which gives us a nice uh, boost in the uh, the picture there the, uh, the tones to it and uh, we'll also remove the color cast as well so just uh, bring that to the right boost that up a bit so if we have a look now at our image from where we were to where we are right now it's already looking quite good with only a few simple adjustments so I'll add another adjustment layer and on this one I want to work on uh, a couple of specifics in the picture firstly the rocks uh, I like uh, I'd like to get these rocks looking quite uh, dynamic so I'm going to add structure to them so what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost the structure right up quite a lot you can see it brings out a lot of details in these rocks so what I'll do then is grab a brush and uh, just brush in the detail into the rocks leaving the other aspects of the photo untouched but we can really get good detail in our in our rocks this way by increasing the structure so brush all that in and we're at 50% uh, if we want we can bump that up even, even further to give it even more detail and of course we can always adjust our mount through here as well if we're happy with the detail in our rocks we can say done so that's quite a vast improvement already now I might uh, I mind um, slightly warming this up a bit and uh, using the uh, golden hour is a nice way of doing that it, uh, it's a very intelligent uh, filter which doesn't uh, create an overall golden cast over the photo but uh, it creates that sort of uh, that feel that you have during golden hour which is really nice so we can look the bef at the before and after of just the one filter to see what it's doing now it may have yellowed things up a bit so I wouldn't mind coming in and just coming uh, to our color temperature 
I'm just uh, dropping back the blue a little towards blue, just a little. And uh, we can see how that looks there. All right. Now, because we're outside, it is quite green. Um, I sometimes would look by adding a new adjustment layer to uh, the foliage enhancer. In this case, it doesn't really need all that much added back. Green-wise, it is very green. It's almost too green. But we will um, we'll work on that in a minute. But uh, I wouldn't go too heavy on the foliage enhancer. So then we could look at um, adding an autumn effect to smooth things out a bit. And uh, so really pumping that right up. But then brushing it back to where we want that to be. So definitely it parts this water here. Like so. And uh, some of the, the grass. Like that. So we can say done to that. So it's quite a dramatic difference between our original photo and where we're at right now. But what I'd really like to do is create a, just that little bit of excitement. And that's by making the, the sun rise. So we'll add the sun rays. Filter in. And uh, we'll place the sun center to just below the horizon here. As it's just popping over the hill. But rather than a harsh white sun, we look at really warming the sun up and warming those rays up as well. We can randomize the way the rays look, how they come out over the hill, uh, reduce the amount to a degree, but increase the look, which the look impacts the entire photo. So we bring the amount down a bit, so it's just very subtle the sun there in the picture. So this was it before and now with the sun shining through. It's keeping it fairly subtle in the photo. Before, after. Now with this I'll add another adjustment layer. Add some filters. I come to dodge and burn and we'll look at by going start painting, look at lightning, just the top of these hills here, which are a little bit underexposed. So we just need to add a bit more light, a bit more exposure into the top of the hills there. So I might just erase it from this bit here, so the sun is contrasting as it comes over the hill. And then we can say done to that, a little bit dodge and burning. Now with this, on this layer, I'll probably look at adding a little bit to the brilliance. Just the vividness to really bring that up. But what I think we need to do, what we need to look at is um, reducing the saturation. So we'll come down to saturation and vibrance and bring the saturation right down and upping the vibrance till it gets to a look that we like because it was, it was quite heavily saturated before we did this we'll just close that off there so you can see the whole photo and then just bring the saturation back to a point where it's not burning our eyes but it's still got a good decent amount of color in the photo now it's personal taste how much you feel it's going to work and won't work. So this was before we did that. Very green, very fake green. Now that we've brought it back, it's more of a natural look. I'm going to add a bit more to the vibrance. Just a little bit more. Now we've gone a little bit too far there. A little bit more to the vividness. And drop that saturation down a bit. Till you find a good balance that uh, that works for you in your photo. So with that, we could also just do a little bit of work on, 
on the color balance so we can just add a new adjustment layer add filters come up to uh, color balance and what I might do is uh, bump up the blues a bit and cyan in the shadows and also in the highlights a bit more blue and a bit more cyan and brush in uh, at an opacity of about 50% because we don't want it to be too strong but just brush some blue into this water here which really adds a nice effect and just into parts of the sky as well just the contrast there with the clouds We can add this little button here which shows you where your your masking is so we add in we can see we'll add, do the whole sky like that and uh, we don't want to do all the, the water but enough to sort of uh, give us the effect we're after and then just uh, look at adding the blue back in because we're on our own uh, own layer here we can then also decide how much of the effect we want coming through on this particular layer and it's not going to affect any of the other adjustments we've done so we'll keep that around 75 percent so done to that now we could put a vignette in if we really need one uh, but we've uh, definitely come from a quite a bleak looking photo to something that's a bit more dynamic. It's a JPEG rather than raw, but it still comes up, uh, you know, quite good with a bit of bit of work using Luminar's different filters, and you get good results. So that's just a basic look at uh, landscape editing using Luminar to really improve a photo that's come from an underexposed look like this to quite a nice looking long exposure of waterfall in the middle of the country. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and stay tuned for more in the future.